Hello everyone. Today we're talking about secure multi-party computation and secure circuit evaluation. So let's jump into it. Today's video is about the problem that one party, Alice, has a secret algorithm and another party, Bob, has secret data. Both do not want to reveal their algorithm or the data respectively, but both want to run Alice's algorithm on Bob's data. Uh, they can use secure, secure circuit evaluation developed by Martin Adabi and John Feigenbaum. There are two assumptions. First, Alice algorithm can be represented as a Boolean circuit that uses only NOT and AND gates. NOT and AND is a universal set, meaning that any logical combination can be created using only these two gates in a Boolean circuit. The result of every circuit is exactly one bit. Second, consequently, Bob's data must be available in binary form. Let's start the algorithm. Bob first has to encrypt his data, in this case a bit B that can be 0 or 1, and he chooses two large primes P and Q and calculates their product N. He also chooses a K at random. This is the encryption algorithm. Let me show you an example on why encryption is done this way. Let's assume n is the product of the primes 3 and 7 and k equals 5. We want to encrypt a bit with uh, value 1 uh, leading to this result. 17 is a quadratic non-residue mode 21 which means there is no number whose square is 17 mode 21. Um, I will talk about quadratic residues in a little bit, uh, but for now it's only important to know that bits with value 1 are encrypted as quadratic non-residues and that it is a hard problem to determine whether a number is a quadratic residue mode any number that's a product of two primes. The problem becomes harder the larger the primes are. Now, Let's look at how a zero is encrypted. We can see that the minus one part of the equation is erased due to any number to the power of zero becomes one and the result is four, which is a quadratic residue as for example, two to the power of two equals four mode 21. Zeros are encrypted as quadratic residues. Alice now receives the encrypted bits without knowing which are residues and which are non-residues. First, let's look at how she calculates the NOT gate. A NOT gate uh, simply flips the bits from 0 to 1 and she chooses a number R at random and calculates the following. How do we know that this is indeed the inversion of the bit? Let's look at an example again. First, we take the same numbers as before and choose an r equals 7. And we know that a 0 bit has been encrypted as 4, so let's use this as an example. Calculating it until the end gives 14 as the inversion of 4. As 14 is a quadratic non-residue in 21, meaning there is no number which, when squared, equals 14 mode 21, this encrypted bit must be a 1. However, Alice doesn't know that. Let's look at another example of the encrypted 1, which was 17. Calculating until the end gives us 7 as the inversion of 17. 7 is a quadratic residue uh, as 7 squared 7 uh, equals 49, which is 7 mode 21. So multiplying with minus 1 is enough to flip bits. However, Alice wants to obfuscate the bits in order to keep it, sec uh, keep it secret which bits are flipped. So the numbers are multiplied with r squared. Any number squared multiplied with a quadratic residue doesn't change this property as the number itself is a quadratic residue because it is squared. Next, how does Alice calculate the end gate? She wants to add b and b prime. For that, she needs help from Bob. First, she has to obfuscate the bits again so Bob doesn't know which bits are being added. 
To this end, she chooses two bits C and C prime, two random numbers R and R prime, and we again have our N, which is the product of two primes. Remember, we want to calculate B and B prime. This is what Alex Alice calculates. She calculates an encrypted bit D using all the variables um, and D prime accordingly. She sends those encrypted bits to Bob. Bob knows the factorization of n, p and q, and can therefore calculate the bits d and d prime as he knows which one is a quadratic residue and which one is a quadratic non-residue. Bob calculates the following four additions, uh, encrypts them again and sends them to Alice. These equations are all variants of d and d prime added together. Alice chooses a value um, according to her random bits c and c prime. So for example, if c equals 0 and c prime equals 0, she chooses the first number. And if c and c prime equal 1, she chooses the fourth number. Again, let's look at an example how it works. Let's say c is 0, c prime is 1, r equals 3, and r prime is 2 n stays 21 and we want to calculate the addition of the bits 1 and 1. Let's put those numbers into the equation and we'll see that e of d equals 6 and e of d prime equals 16. Those values are sent to Bob. As Bob knows n's factorization, he can determine whether those two numbers are quadratic residues or not. As you can see, 6 is a quadratic non-residue and 16 is a quadratic residue, 4 squared. Therefore, he knows that d equals 1 and d prime equals 0. He proceeds to calculate the additions of the variations of d and d prime as is shown here. For simplicity reasons, we ignore the encryption for now and he just sends these numbers to Alice. Remember, that c is 0, c prime is 1, and so she chooses the second solution, which is exactly the solution we want, since our initial bits were 1 and 1. That concludes secure circuit evaluation. If you're interested in the millionaire's problem, another application of secure multiparty computation, you will find the video in the description. But for now, I conclude today's video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.